Hi everyone, my name is Ella Haugen and I'm going to be introducing you to environmental monitoring of urban heat islands, flooding, and canopy cover. We will introduce these phenomena and explore their causes and risks. We will also examine how urban heat islands, flooding, and canopy cover can be monitored and researched using remote sensing. Next week, we will look at each in more detail and explore case studies for each. First, let's look at urban heat islands. What are urban heat islands? Urban areas experience higher temperatures than outlying areas, and that difference in temperature is what constitutes an urban heat island. The temperature difference is usually larger at night than during the day, and is most apparent when winds are weak. An urban heat island happens when a city is warmer than the area around it. There are two types of urban heat islands. Surface urban heat islands represent the temperature difference between impervious and natural surfaces. Impervious surfaces are things that don't allow liquid to pass through them, like buildings and concrete. These things are common in cities, and they take longer to give off heat than things like trees, which are common outside of cities. This image illustrates this. Things like roads are red, showing that their surface temperature is much higher than surrounding natural surfaces, which are blue and green. The second type of urban heat islands is atmospheric urban heat islands, which refers to effects on air from the surface to treetops and rooftops. So, what causes urban heat islands? Difference in temperature has to do with modified land surfaces. Temperatures vary in cities due to the amount of space that water, soil, vegetation, and impervious surfaces occupy. Remember that impervious surfaces don't allow fluid to pass through them, such as buildings and pavement. These surfaces absorb rather than reflect the sun's heat, which make it hotter. Tall buildings act as obstacles and reduce wind flow, which would make it cooler. Less vegetation minimizes the natural cooling effects of shade. Vehicles, air conditioning units, buildings, and industrial facilities all emit heat. All of these things together contribute to sitting cities being warmer than areas around them. Why should you care about this? Urban heat islands can pose a risk to city dwellers. These include increased risk of heart-related mortality and morbidity, energy and consumption, elevated emissions of air pollutants and greenhouse gases, and degraded water quality. So it's important to understand urban heat islands so that we can address these risks and, min min and minimize them when possible. Next, we will look at urban flooding. So what is urban flooding? How is it different from rural flooding? When urban areas flood, it is because of excessive runoff in developed areas where the water doesn't have anywhere else to go. This is why urbanization increases flood risk and urban flooding is different from rural flooding. What causes urban flooding? The causes of urban flooding fall into one of two categories, natural and human induced. These things are all closely related and often urban floods happen due to a combination of natural and human induced causes. Some natural causes are heavy precipitation, snow melt, river floods, and coastal storms. Some human induced causes inclu include a lack of proper drainage systems, unplanned development, and infrastructure failure. There are many. It is a danger to human. It can cause damage to things like buildings, housing, roads, utility works, and drainage systems, and can have direct economic impacts. It is projected that by 2050, two thirds of the world's population will be living in urban areas. And this prompts rapid, unplanned increases in urbanization. This can lead to inadequate infrastructure that makes cities more vulnerable to floods. Now let's look at urban canopy. Urban canopy is the layer of leaves, branches, and stems of trees that cover the ground when viewed from above. In the image to the right, you get an aerial view of an urban area, and all of the trees in the image are urban canopy. Unlike urban flooding and urban heat islands, urban canopy is actually a good thing. The biggest benefit of urban canopy is that it mitigates or reduces the effects of urban heat islands in many ways, such as by providing shade. Another way it does this is through a pro process called evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration is the sum of evaporation and plant transpiration from the Earth's land and ocean surface to the atmosphere. This creates a cooling effect. Remember that a big cause of urban heat islands is that impervious surfaces absorb heat, but trees are not impervious surfaces and they reflect heat, which counteracts this. 
So now you know what urban heat islands, flooding, and canopy are. But what do these have to do with remote sensing? You previously saw how satellites work, and they are actually used to monitor things like urban heat islands, flooding, and canopy. Mapping this data can provide insight about how vulnerable cities are, which is an important step in adaptation and mitigation. Some key things to take away from this video are that urban heat islands happen when a city is warmer than the area around it. Urban flooding is excessive runoff in developed areas where the water doesn't have anywhere else to go, which is why urbanization increases flood risk. An urban canopy is a layer of leaves, branches, and stems of trees that cover the ground in an urban area when viewed from above. Remember that these things have many causes and effects, and they all relate to remote sensing. You may recognize this image from our title slides of this presentation. This image is actually an example of urban flooding. It was taken on April 17th by Landsat 8 and shows the Red River spanning across Minnesota and North Dakota. Spring melting and geography caused with flooding with water levels up to 43 feet. 